So hi to everyone. Blessings. My name is Sean Oakes. I am um, in Northern California on unceded Southern Pomo land in Western Sonoma County. It's a beautiful spring day here. Um, really quite radiant outside. I hope things are well where you are. Um, I use he and him and they pronouns and uh, I'm uh, I'm partly a scholar academic and partly a practitioner and partly an administrator. I work uh, right now helping to run the new Dharma Institute at Spirit Rock Meditation Center here in California, uh, putting together large training programs with our teachers. Come and check us out there. Um, and I teach independently. Uh, I started practice in the early 90s in Zen with a very fierce and kind of problematic uh, Zen teacher. Um, blessings to his spirit and um, to all of his students uh, for healing and well-being. And, um, and I found the insight tradition in 1999 uh, and had the great privilege to work closely with Jack Cornfield for a decade or so in the early aughts. Um, and uh, he encouraged me to start teaching about 15 years ago. And it's really been a pleasure to teach in the insight stream uh, I was a monk for a very short while in Burma, um, practicing on long retreat in the Mahasi tradition. And, um, and quite a bit of my practice right now is with the monastics of the forest Sangha in the lineage of Ajahn Chah. So through Jack, my grandfather teacher, blessings to them, uh, the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis of that lineage, uh, and gratitude for their preservation of the Dharma. Um, it's a joy to come here to this Sangha, beautifully developed and held uh, by Dr. Hansen for these many years. Um, part of my delight in coming is uh, sharing with Rick, um, with Rick's interest, you know, a love for the, um, the neuroscience side of the Dharma, and, um, and particularly through the somatic uh, practices of somatic experiencing and polyvagal theory and organic intelligence that really you know, started off as trauma work, but really opened up uh, my understanding of the Dharma in the direction of how our bodies, how our animal bodies process and relate to the world around us and how, how that in a certain way is, is another vocabulary for what the Buddha was very clearly talking about uh, when he was talking about suffering, craving, you know, attachment, clinging. Uh, and sometimes I'll use the words, you know, trauma and karma or trauma and attachment uh, somewhat uh, interchangeably because of how related uh, the processes of the nervous system clinging to past hurt and loss are um, in the Dharma process. So that's a bit about me. Um, I was also a performance artist and I was in a French circus and other things. Um, in my academic life, I did, a, I did my dissertation in performance studies, comparing the reports of advanced Buddhist meditators doing jhana practice, uh, deep concentration practice, with the reports of experimental dancers doing, um, doing somatic based uh, um, uh, dance performance or performance art. And so I have, a, I have a particular fondness for the subtle and not so subtle extraordinary states that meditation and uh, contemplative practice of many kinds uh, brings us to. Uh, so I'll stop there about me. And again, welcome to everyone uh, coming in from all over the place. Welcome to your various heritages and ancestries and races and genders and um, political positionalities and places in the world, in the world that is so uh, shot through with suffering and, and harm at this moment, at the same time as it is shot through with beauty. Uh, and it is particularly the, the suffering that the Dharma is a medicine for. And so beauty and Dharma, both medicines for the suffering of the world. And uh, so I invite us to be present with the entirety of our human life on the planet in this moment and everything happening 
uh, nothing excluded. Um, and in that light, I have a special prayer for those suffering at this moment in the, uh, in the theaters of war and devastation um, in Gaza, in Ukraine, um, in Myanmar, where the war is turning uh, against the military dictatorship and back toward the people, um, and a lot of suffering there, and a place that's very close to my heart, where I was a monk. So a special blessing for the people of Myanmar and Burma, and all over. Uh, it's at the core of the Buddha's teachings that hatred never uh, heals hatred, but only love heals hatred. And, uh, and it's our strange, uh, impossible practice to be committed to that in a world that otherwise, in many moments, is so committed to hatred. So our practice tonight, uh, at least from me, partly dedicated toward that end. So we'll do what I think is, is often done in these kinds of gatherings. We'll sit for a little bit or be in stillness in a posture that's good for you for a bit. Um, uh, to my list, my, to my very, very short and incomplete list of war zones, uh, uh, the chat adds Sudan and absolutely uh, blessings to Sudan and, and the people there um, and everywhere. And, you know, we, we could all actually name a place connected to our hearts um, or, or that our hearts particularly resonate with uh, that is suffering right now. And, um, and of course, that goes all the way down from nation states far away to our home neighborhood and the city we come from to our family living room to, uh, you know, that bone in our hip that won't stop uh, yelling at us. And so, uh, so to all of these peoples, and yes, the balance uh, of suffering throughout the Middle East includes the people of Israel, of course, of course, and, um, and, and blessings of, for all of those who just came through uh, Passover and a good Pesach to everyone following that heritage. May everyone be safe. So, all right, so we'll come into some meditation. I'll give a bit of instruction and then I'll leave some space for silence. And, um, and because we we've touched into the violence and the war theme, um, and, you know, and folks are still dropping blessings into the chat and I receive all of these as blessings, please. Um, and you can continue if you like, if that's moving to you to bring places and issues into the chat stream, um, or begin the meditation with this opening in compassion an opening in care for beings, beings that are close to our hearts and further away. And, and remembering, and this is really a turn in the Dharma, remembering that loving kindness and compassion are uh, immeasurables because they don't uh, exclude anyone. They don't exclude any kind of being. So uh, our friends, our enemies, um, those we know and don't know, beings in form, beings beyond form, uh, all beings, all beings deserving of safety, deserving of care. Uh, and so we, we turn toward the radical act of resting at ease with the cries of the world ringing all around. This is the great practice of Kuan Yin. So we'll begin with compassion and loving kindness tonight. Come into a posture of ease. If you're in a sitting posture, you might invite the qualities of dignity, nobility into the posture. This can mean lifting gently through the sternum, opening the front of the body, opening the shoulders. This is a gesture of fearlessness just by itself to sit tall and not hunch over protecting the heart. We do this when we are in a place that's safe and held enough to do so, held by the refuge of community, held by the safety of our being in our own space. Sit in a way that shines your goodness forth. 
We're going for a balance between brightness and uprightness through the body, relaxedness and ease and non-strain. And so you might relax around the eyes and the jaw, let the shoulders drop, let the chin relax and the head float on the neck, balanced over the heart and the heart balanced over the hips. If your feet are on the floor, letting them be flat on the floor and well supported rather than hanging or crossed. And it's nice for the back to be tall, whether that's with support or without. If you're on a cushion or a bench, feeling a wide base of support between knees supported and the sit bones and tailbone. You might invite a few full breaths. On the in-breath, remembering goodness in the world, your own and others, taking in the quality of kindness, goodness, and just breathing it out, each breath remembering kindness. And initially, like filling up our own cup first, we just breathe it in and begin to fill the body with kindness and compassion. If the talk of the various wars and the suffering stirred up your heart, don't worry or make that into a problem or a distraction. Let the care that underlies that stirring up let the care be your, uh, your meditation seat, really. The field around the body, the refuge. Breathing in compassion for your own suffering. And breathing out compassion for others. The words kindness and compassion sometimes can feel like an idea or an abstraction. What does it mean to breathe in compassion, to breathe out compassion? We invite a feeling and then we see what comes. The breathing in and out just begins to wash the body's energy, to fill the body with fresh energy. It's grounding, it's arriving. It begins to wake up the feelings that are here when we're not distracted, pulled away. And so if it's helpful, you could deepen the breath even more. You could slow it or lengthen it or breathe just in a relaxed, natural way. Go for what feels good. And then the compassion can be just what's naturally here when we get real with the world. So in your meditation, instead of closing off to the world, we begin by remembering the world. And if the sorrows are too much, weave the beauties into it. Remember the beauty of the Dharma, the teachings of wisdom. Remember your friends, the wise ones, the good ones. Friends on the path. Think of your teachers, inspiring figures. 
These are all the first steps of loving-kindness practice because they nourish the heart and they weave beauty into the process of opening to the world. So the full body breath is just a way of practicing with breath and feeling where instead of observing the breath at the tip of the nose or the chest or the rise and fall of the belly, we keep the sense of the whole body in mind. And the breath doesn't have to be extra deep. It can be if you want, if it feels good. But you're just breathing, keeping the sensations of the whole body and even a field a little bit around the body in mind. And we breathe so that we're filling out the field around the body with breath. Giving particular attention to places that that don't move as easily or where there's a blankness or a numb space in the energetic field. Sometimes that's behind us, like a blind spot off to one side. Feel the breath in the front of the body, but also in the sides, in the back. Feel how the breath pours into the body like it's pressing down toward the earth and you feel the, the earth beneath you, the down direction. And breathing out, feel how the breath pours up through the body. And maybe you include the head and the space above. If you want to be more systematic in the full body breath, you might begin with the front side of the body, feeling the breath there until you can feel it through the whole front side of the body. Maybe it takes 20 or 30 seconds to really blossom the sensation there. You just stay and listen and feel. And then you can turn your attention to the right side of the body and do the same thing. Stay there until the sensations blossom and open. And then the back, and then the left side, and then above and below. So you stitch together a sphere of presence around the body, just breathing and caring about this one who sits here, loving this one who sits here. And breathing out that love toward everyone in this circle and everyone we know that's already thousands of people and then everyone they know, everyone we see on our screens and hear about far away and all the people we don't see and hear about, the billions of people living their lives finding their way, loving comfort and pleasure and fearing pain and loss, breathing so that the breath and the care goes out in all directions to all these beings. If the mind wanders, Fill the body with more energy. And begin to delight in the filling of the body with energy. Just spreading the warmth of the breath and kindness through the whole body.
Maybe stillness begins to deepen. And you can invite stillness to deepen. Including the animal realm in our radiating of kindness. All the animals, large and small, external and internal to the body, all the beings, seen and unseen, who walk the earth, who crawl, who swim, who fly, who course through our bloodstream and spin the mitochondria in our cells, all the beings that we interbe with. Compassion and kindness, appreciation, and radiating from the whole body. and the spirit beings of all kinds, near and far, accessible to us and not accessible to us. All the subtle beings, the ancestors, those who protect and those just living their own lives in the spirit realms. May they be safe, free from loss, happy. We radiate through the whole body. We'll sit in silence together. For another 15 minutes or so. Encouragement to continue practicing the full body breath and the radiating of loving kindness and compassion. Or to settle into your home base meditation practice delighting in stillness, kindness together.
to close our meditation time, invoking the Buddhist immeasurable quality of compassion in the form of the Himalayan and, and Chinese beloved figure known as Quan Shi Yin. The Himalayan name in Sanskrit is Avalokiteshvara, the one with a thousand arms and hands and eyes to see into all corners of the world and offer compassion and action and support, succor, a balm to the heart. And when Avalokiteshvara, the figure, was interpreted into the Chinese uh, imaginary or into the Chinese dream mind, uh, he became Shi Quan Shi Yin, the feminine force of compassion, the one who rides a dragon through the waves of samsara, carrying the nectar of uh, peace in a vase. And she's Quan Shi Yin uh, because, uh, like the name Avalokiteshvara, uh, there's the literal meaning of the one who listens to the cries of the world while resting at ease. And Kuan Yin's core meditation is a listening meditation. And, and this is at the heart of compassion, is the listening. And so she listens to the songs of the world, the cries of the world, um, but she never loses the inner composure, the inner dignity of heart, the resting at ease amid all of it. So her mantra, I'll end with just sing, I'll sing it three times. You can join in if you know it or you're in a space where you want to make some sound, is, uh, is Namo uh, Kwan Shi, I'll write it in the chat, um, Kwan Shi Yin Pusa. Namo Kwan Shi Yin Pusa. Uh, yes, the Tibetan, uh, translation of the name is Chen Rezig, so it's all the same figure. So I'll sing three times her mantra uh, from the Chinese Pure Land and Chan tradition through my teachers Kitisaro and Tanisara and the beautiful tradition of Master Hua. Namo Kwan Shi Yin Pusa 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 Blessings to everyone here, blessings to all beings.